Right now, I'm uploading a thousand images into Affinity to see if it will crash. And that's just one of the many torture tests I'm gonna be doing to this new software to really push it to its limits. A lot of people, including myself, have claimed that Affinity is better than Adobe, and I wanna put it to the ultimate test and see just how far this thing can go. And the first test that we're gonna do is seeing how big you can upscale an image. So this image right here is 10,000 pixels. Obviously, it's an image of the entire world world to give you some perspective whoa god what was that now to give you some perspective the average photo you might take on your phone might be a thousand pixels to maybe three thousand pixels so this is already ten thousand starting out and one of affinity's new tools that a lot of people are very excited about is this super resolution tool so what this tool does is let's say you have a pretty small pixelated image what i like to do for this example is just take this affinity logo drag it in here and you can see that's a really small image and if I try to make it bigger it just gets blurry and it gets very pixelated. Now if I were to use the super resolution tool it just takes a few seconds to process and now you can see the before and after it turns that blurry pixelated image into a really sharp crisp image with no pixels. It works great a lot of people really like this. Now I want to let you know first of all this video is not sponsored at all. I might feel like it because I'm showing off affinity and its new tools but I'm I'm truly trying to break this program. I'd like to see if we can turn this image of 10,000 pixels into 100,000 or more and see just how big we can upscale until Affinity can't handle it. And it, it looks like that's already happening. Oh God, it can't even put the picture in. It's already crashing. What's going on? Oh no, force quit. <laughs> Open recovery file. And all we're gonna do is hit super resolution and I guess we'll turn this up. Oh, <laughs> it just started without me. And I guess it's going. And keep in mind, like we just saw with the Affinity logo when I showed you that example, that only took a few seconds. So be interesting to see exactly how long we're in for. Let me show you what my laptop looks like. I wonder if you can see this. It looks like it just finished. It took uh, almost an hour. <laughs> I'm not even joking. Almost an hour, but this is what it looks like. The before and after here, as I slide back and forth, the after it gets a little darker. Let's see if we zoom in. You can see it is defining a lot more of the details um, on this massive scale. So it does look a lot better. I will say like, look at how much cleaner that is. That's crazy. I'm zooming out. Oh my gosh, I'm so scared it's gonna crash after an hour. I don't want this thing to crash, please. It's totally frozen right now. It's one of those moments where like, you know, if you like click something, the whole window's gonna like freeze, goes like white, and then like the progress bar comes up and it's like, Windows is waiting for for Pixelmator. What is this app? Windows is waiting for Affinity to respond. That's what we're in right now. This app is, it's done for. Come on, come on. Oh, there we go. Okay, thank God. Should I go all the way? That's such a bad idea. That spinning wheel of death. Okay, let's see if I can just hit apply. Do we do it? Looks like it. Okay, so now it's about 40,000 pixels. So it went up about four times. I know this is a terrible idea, but I would love to hit it again. I really wanna see if we can get this thing to like 100,000 pixels. I will say we're hitting a limit, but it is, it's doing it. Like it has, it successfully 4X'd this giant image of the planet. So it is doing it, but it does feel like we are starting to hit a boundary. There seems to be a little bit of a wall here that I'm not, I'm not too sure if we're gonna get past. I should have saved. Why didn't I save? I could have just saved the project. So if it can't come back right now, then it might fail this test because I wasn't able to export the image. If it can come back and I can export this image, I will say it has passed. But if it can't come back from this spinning wheel of death, then Affinity sucks. <laughs> okay, I've been holding on for this. Whoa, no way. Oh my God, look, it's like going. It's, 
<laughs> this is a miracle. I've been holding on for like 20 minutes or so probably. I literally had four squid open. I was about to shut this thing down and it just finally recovered. I'm gonna see if I can hit save. That looks nothing like it should. It's totally messed up. Can I even believe the second I turn the camera back on, this thing is like, oh yeah, I'm good. I'm good now. Now the test is, will it actually export this image? I cleared like 300 gigabytes from my computer to make sure that Affinity had as much space as it needed to do this project. How is there 150 gigabytes available? 154, 153? It's, it's already taking up gigabytes. I don't know if it's gonna be able to export this. Good night, I'll see you when it, I'll see you when it exports. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I think it actually exported. Yeah, here it is. It is only 768 megabytes, which is surprising how much storage was burning from my computer to process it. Dang, that is sharp. That is sharp as a tack. <laughs> is it wonky? I don't know. Look how bad it looks in Pixelmator. I mean, not Pixelmator. Why do I keep calling it Pixelmator? Affinity. Affinity. I don't know what happened to it in Affinity. This is the before and here is the after. Oh, there it is. It definitely got a little squished. This is before and this is after. So it definitely came out wrong, <laughs> but I think at some point with my clicking and like trying to get Affinity to respond, I, I, I probably messed it up, but it is sharp. I'll, I'll give you that. It is definitely sharp. It is 32,000 pixels now. I thought it was closer to 40, but whatever. A uh, resolution is 72. I guess the big question is whether or not I, this is such a bad idea, a terrible idea to put it back in Affinity, but I can't help myself. I mean, this is a good question. Can Affinity open a 32,000 pixel image? Yes, there it goes. They did open it fine now. And now can it super resolution it again? <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm gonna cut cameras. We're gonna give this one more shot. Let's see if it can do it. It just totally crashed. My Mac crashed. Should I try to restore it? Sure, I'll hit the button. Oh, this is all it brought back. <laughs> just the artboard. Okay, well, you know, I'll give Affinity a break. Uh, it did manage to export that 30, 40,000 pixel image. Uh, it cannot do it again, but that's okay. I'm gonna say Affinity passed this test. Let's move on to test number two. Okay, so next I wanna see how many images you can import into Affinity at one time. But first I'm gonna try to clear off some data. I'm gonna run this. Yesterday I ran this and it should be zero. So I'm gonna see how much system data was used in our, our last test. So it looks like about five gigabytes of data was used just to upscale that photo in that last test, which is kind of crazy. So in this next test, I have 985, almost a thousand images. This is a project that I did. I do these drone maps. They're actually crazy. If you've never seen this sort of thing before, basically I take a thousand images with the drone and it creates almost like a Google Earth style uh, 3D map. It's really cool. I do these for clients, but like I said, the result is you're using a drone to capture sometimes thousands of images. So just this project was already a thousand images. So I thought this would be a good test. Now you might be thinking, of course, Affinity is going to crash if you try to put a thousand photos into it. But truthfully, that shouldn't be that bad because I dump a thousand photos into Lightroom all the time and it handles it like a champ. And I actually dumped all 1000 of these photos into Photomator the other day and edited them. So this is Photomator. This opened up really quickly and this is all of my photos just instantly in Photomator. And then I can edit one and copy and paste all the adjustments to the other images. I did this the other day, super easy, handled it like a champ, no problem at all. Let's see if Affinity can do the same thing. Okay, here goes nothing. File, open, here's our folder. And here's our thousand images open. Okay, so down here below on the corner, it says loading 63 documents. Now it says loading 54. 
I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Affinity is not claiming to be a Lightroom competitor, which is honestly a little disappointing to me because if they were, that would really, that would really solve basically every single one of my needs. So it is officially frozen. You can see I'm moving my trackpad here to no avail. The artboard is not moving. I've got the spinning wheel of death now. Okay, I guess I'm going to cut. Oh, uh-oh. It says your system has run out of application memory. And you can see Affinity is apparently using 60 gigabytes of memory to try to import these photos. I don't think that's good. Now while that loads, I want to talk about another tool that helps creatives. This is Durable. I know so many creatives who procrastinate building their website because they dread all of the work that comes with it. Durable's website builder is the fastest in the world and can create you a website in about 30 seconds. Let's check it out. This is it in real time generating my full website. And if you don't like anything, you can totally change everything. You have full control over everything on this website but the AI tool helps you do it fast and just get something to get started with. Plus Durable has built-in SEO and marketing tools so you can actually get your website discovered not just displayed. They also have this beta feature called chats which are AI chats to help you do the work that you don't want to do. It's able to use AI to look at all the data, look at your website and just make life a lot easier. And this is a studio tool where you can create AI images. Let's see if it can make custom typos that says be creative as a transparent PNG. And here it is, custom typography that says be creative. I can download this and look at that, it is a transparent PNG. You can track your invoices here, your contacts, everything you need to keep your website and your business and your brand organized. So if you're looking for something like this to make your life a little easier, I check out Durable today. You can get 30% off any plan with my code Grayson30. Now let's see if these pictures loaded. So these pictures never loaded. <laughs> <laughs> no shot, absolutely no shot that these would ever load. I put my laptop down right here and just walked away for about two hours to see if maybe it would make a little bit of progress. But even that bottom number of like 53 photos uploaded, nothing, nothing at all. And then when I tried to pack it up and close out of Affinity, not only was it totally frozen and it could not even close, but I couldn't even force quit any app on my computer. Everything completely crashed. It got to the point where I literally had to hold down the power button and just completely shut down my MacBook. So I think we can successfully say that this test completely failed and crashed Affinity. Let's move on to test number three. So one of the features that Affinity has in this new update, I tried this in my last video, it's called Live Filter Layer. And it's really cool. Let me show you. So you go to Pixel, Live Filter Layer. I did lighting for this thumbnail. And as you can see, you can like cast a shadow and a light on an image, which is pretty incredible. And it actually worked out really well in my last video because, whoa, what did I just do? <laughs> oh no. It worked out really well for this thumbnail and in my last video, it literally can see like the layers on the photo and the light reacts with the layers. It is really neat. But I kind of noticed right off the bat that it was starting to slow down a little bit the more I used it. So the question is, how many of these live filter layers can I stack on top of each other before Affinity explodes? Let's find out. So first I have to get something off my chest. I completely deleted this project file. <laughs> I was making room on my computer and I was like, this is just one project file for a thumbnail and it was like 200 megabytes and I was like, I'm just gonna get rid of this. And now like literally two days after I did that, I, I need it for this video, or at least I want it. So to make up for that, I'm gonna add a couple of layers to this. It's not gonna be quite as pretty, but let's grab one of our photos that we were supposed to be able to upload in the last test. Let's see what else is on my computer. <laughs> oh, the Creative Brief. We can add uh, the Creative Brief logo. If you don't know the Creative Brief, it's my newsletter where you can see all the, news, the new things that happen in design, in the world, in the creative industry. So if you like that, check out the Creative Brief brief newsletter it's once a month in your email okay this is a pretty high-res drone photo 
Okay, sweet. So now we've got some layers. This looks pretty good. So let's add our first live layer. You got a pixel, live filter layer, lighting, lighting. Let's try live filter layer Gaussian blur. Okay, it just blurs the whole image. I guess I'll just add a little bit. Just soft focus. I mean, it's my picture doesn't look as good as it once did, but it's performing well. Add a little live noise. Let's add another lighting effect. We're like starting to lose the image. Whoa, that's cool. I like this better than the original thumbnail. I'm gonna have to go back and change it. This is definitely getting a little slow now. You can tell it's it's not really liking what I'm doing here. I don't know why it's doing this, but it's making like boxes within boxes. Like I don't know what this rectangle is now and why it's only being applied to that rectangle. This is honestly a real work of art. What if I group all of these? And then what if I add a live layer? Whoa, where'd they all go? I think maybe we're making progress on crashing it because I'm starting to think this isn't supposed to be working like this. Did it make another box? It made another box. What is this? Why does it keep making more and more rectangles? I don't understand. It's not crashing. It is a little bit slower, but, um, whoa. Look at how it acts when I move. It's like it's, it really is like it's alive. It's like an animal. <laughs> it's definitely slowing down. Okay, so I have added quite a few layers to this and while it is a little bit wonky, as you can see if I like try to zoom out, it, it turns into this explosion uh, and then if you zoom back in, it's like, um, it, it's, it's just dynamic. There you go. That's like an Apple term. Um, <laughs> so as you scroll in and out, you get different images. <laughs> Pretty insane. But all that being said, it has not crashed at all. Uh, it's handling it. It's not like it's crashed. So uh, even though this isn't quite what I was expecting, I, I do think it's a piece of art. It animates, it moves, and it's really come quite a long way from my original thumbnail. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I would say Affinity passed this test in a very strange way. It has passed the final test. I would just say, if you haven't tried Affinity, again, totally not sponsored, but check it out. It's a free software. It's pretty sick. So, um, I don't know. I would check it out. This has been just kind of a fun video to pick on it a little bit and, uh, and try to torture it. And if you like this video, you'll probably like my hands-on review right here. So, check that out. If you want, want to see me make that thumbnail that you just saw me destroy. 